and welcome back to Joygasm, a video game and movie podcast. I'm Russ, and he is Steve. And my goodness, we have tasted the Forbidden West in episode 263 today, February 25th, 2022. We're going to be going right into our topic of the day, which is the Horizon Forbidden West gameplay reactions. So there's no need to fast forward and look at those timestamps whatsoever. But before we get started, make sure you hack into that subscribe button and sneak up on that notification bell. That way you will not miss a single solitary episode of Joygasm, which drops once a week, every week. Steve... I figured, I figured you would shove your spear to the subscribe button, Russ, not necessarily hack. You know, perhaps we will do that in the outro. <laughs> uh, gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way you think. I like it. Oh. That's the fun thing about that is that you could just be as creative as you want to be. And I, it's very evident that not only can I mm. come up with such creativity, but yeah. uh, this Chrome Dome right here. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. It, too, is filled with all kinds of mm. mysteries and who knows what's it. I feel the warmth of your hand on my noggin. Boink. Boink. <laughs> Just go ahead and make a wish, Russ. I'll give you three. <laughs> It's up to me if I grant them or not. <laughs> now I got this image of you with your arms crossed, all like genie style from Aladdin. <laughs> <laughs> Only you're probably a lot hairier than, uh, well, I was going to say Robin Williams, but actually probably not. Robin Williams was, you know, God rest his soul. Uh, a a hairy pet. man. A very hairy man. Yeah, carpet chest, they called him. You know. I don't know what they called him. We, we're not here to talk about Robin Williams's hairiness. Digressing. We are here to talk about Horizon Forbidden West. The forbidden hairiness. Exactly. Now, <laughs> just to recap a teensy little bit. So sure, Russ. The first game, Horizon Zero Dawn, came what out happened? in 2017. Ah. And it was, in fact, my uh, favorite game of the year. And ever since then, I have been trying like mad. Oh, really? Trying to get as many of my friends and uh, other fellow just just gamers out there to give the game a shot because I was actually surprised about how many people actually have yet to play or beat the really? first game, including you. I have something to say about that. Oh, I figured you would. So um, I went home after uh, the other night. Mm. Russ, after playing, well. Watching. Watching, yes. Uh, and I thought, well, you know, I'm probably good to play the game a little bit, you know? I, I mean, I did play it uh, for a while. I, like, literally just, like, just got the earpiece, and, like, that was it. Uh, hey, <laughs> so you got yourself the focus. But that was that was back in the day mm -hmm. when I decided, like, to play it, because it it's on the PlayStation. Uh-huh. It came out on the PS4. Well, it's on the hard drive. It is indeed. Well, from what I bought from you. You're welcome. However, fast forward to the last night, I go, hmm, I'm going to come play the game here. Let's scroll through the games. It's gone. Really? It is. And so I go, huh, well, I'll be. And so like I go, oh, let's log out of me and I'll log back into Russ's profile. On the <laughs> and so I go over there and I scroll over. There it is. And so I go, oh, okay, I'll just select it. It goes, oh, this uh, this game has been removed. It has been removed. Please plug in the external storage device back into the... I go, <laughs> awesome. That's great. Uh, that's too bad there, Sweet. Steve. Sweet. That's too bad. Where were we? Uh, well... My goodness. You were playing the game uh, a while ago. You've been trying to get your friends and neighbors and everybody to, to also play the game. It was the game of the year. See, I pay attention. You huh? do, Steve. You do. You do indeed. Thank you much. Yeah. So that was one of the things that I found to be quite surprising, really, was that even after the game had launched and, and gained all these accolades like it so deserved, even to this day when the sequel comes out, um, 
there have been quite a few folks who were, who were very interested in picking the game up. They've seen the game trailer like, oh, I want to try it. But they've never played or beaten the first game. And I'm, I'm here to tell you, hold on. Like, don't actually, like, if you haven't played or beaten the first game, I would heavily recommend that you stop what you're doing with the second game. Don't even like, I, I would even, if you purchased it, just put it down. I, I wouldn't even purchase it yet until you've played the first game because just simply because the story immediately takes off where the first one ended. Yeah. I know what was going on. And that's good though, because you haven't played the first game. Like, like this, this game. So, I mean, I guess we, we can even like kind of get more involved do it. with uh, the story side of things since we're, we're already gabbing about it. What happened, Russ? So initially... No, what, no, no. Well, so what uh, I'm going to say is that okay. I want to be careful about not giving away spoilers. I don't oh. want to just simply say, oh, this is what happened in the first game because people like you haven't played it yet. And I, and I don't want to spoil it. By the time I get it back <clears throat> from the hard drive... And plug Steve, back in. Game, I'm gonna forget. The first game is probably like <laughs> twenty dollars <not> <laughs> to buy these days. It came out in 2017. <laughs> Don't be cheap, Steve. <laughs> that means I need to delete something. Hmm. If I delete it, I can get it back, right? Don't you have like wipeout or something on your PS4 that you can take I off the hard drive? Do I could take that off? Yeah. 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 I'd be I'd be willing to bet you. The original Horizon Zero Dawn is probably available for like 20 bucks. Actually, I think it's available for like $9 and 50 Dude. cents. <laughs> if for nothing else, because the game is one of like, seriously, it's like one of the best games ever. Like, I believe you, you. You need to have it in your library just for that reason alone. I won't go to sleep until I slay me some mech dinosaurs. Yes, you should. Absolutely. So yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my best to not give away any spoilers, even from the first game, mm. simply because it's the two games are so intertwined. And right. I think that's the biggest thing about it is like, like a good comparison would be the Lord of the Rings movies where like, you know, you, when, when we first went to the theater and we saw the two towers, mm. the, the way that movie begins, I mean, you are thrust right back into like what was going on toward the end of fellowship yeah. of the ring. And so it's like, Oh wow, this is, this is really, really cool. Now it didn't make much sense to someone like you because obviously you haven't played the first game. So all these characters you're looking at, you're like, I have no idea who this is. I recognize the main character. <clears throat> well, that, that's a start, Steve. That's a start. That's good. Then I didn't see the uh, dad anywhere. Dad. What? Father Aloy. Oh, you're talking about mm. the bearded man. Yes. The painted man. He haunts my dreams. <laughs> What's that from, Steve? Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, Russ. Oh, good man. Good man. <laughs> Such a good movie. I was thinking how to impersonate her, but she's got like a blind eye or like something like a stigma in her eye. And I can't, I can't do that. Russ. Yeah, no, I can't do that. No, no. no. What what was my impression pretty good though of her though, Steve? I didn't think of that one all of a sudden and uh you came out of that out of nowhere with that. So <laughs> kudos to you. You know what's really funny is that he was painted too. He has like the blue face paint on, so yeah. there you go. Uh but yeah, anyway. The the first game itself, <laughs> uh there's so much to love. The, mm. the 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 graphics engine was a was a graphical tour de force. It was a wonderful action adventure title in the sense that you had plenty of action, but then at the same time, it totally embraces the the word adventure. Mm. I mean, like like you go out in the world. I, I remember playing the first game for the first time, and how the world itself was absolutely huge. Like you were you were. It's one of those like games where you're slowly revealing the map. Mm. And you think, oh, there's probably only so much more that's going to be. The, and it just kept growing and growing. I was like, oh, my goodness. This is ambitious. This is an ambitious title. And uh, and, and it looks as though um, the sequel is going to be more of the same, which is fantastic. I mean, Guerrilla Games has definitely taken what they started with and gone on. But I don't, but I don't want to digress too far away because I do want to stick to story for just a little while longer, Steve. I guess the map grew, but just didn't grow west. Technically, it did, in fact, grow mm. west. I just don't think it went far west. Up until the forbidden point. Indeed. Indeed. Yes. And the story itself, mm. what, one of the, the other um, kudos I want to give to Gorilla Games with regards to the sequel in this instance mm. is 
that I was personally curious about how they were going to be able to continue telling a captivating story simply because the first game had the story that was, I mean, it was seriously one of the, the best gaming stories I've ever heard in all my years of playing games. They were doling out these various details. And then by the end of the game, you're just, you're floored. You're like, that was such a good story. And that, you know, lends itself to becoming almost like a, a creative challenge in the sense that, we, well, if, mm. if they tell that such a captivating story the first time, how are they going to be able to continue down this roads? And I'm, again, I'm being intentionally high level, but the way that they were telling the story in the first game, it had certain dependencies based off the story structure. And by the end of the first game, it's like all of those, those different kind of like type of components had um, kind of had a domino effect that revealed all these aha type moments. Mm. Right. So, I'm curious to know playing through the the sequel, how are they going to be able to, to still do that? Or will they in fact want to keep using those types of approaches with storytelling? Russ, I'm sure they will take hmm. what was successful in the first game when everybody liked and well, they'll tell the team let's move forward with this. People didn't like the little areas, but they liked all this other stuff. We need to use this and shove it in people's faces so they'll like more of the cool things we have to offer. Gorilla Games. Now, what else did they make? Did they make uh, Killzone? They did. Ah, yes. They did indeed. Yes, Killzone, yeah. Mm -hmm. You haven't played that one, have you? I have not, no, Steve. I've played that one. Gorilla Games uh, is a company that actually, I don't think I really played anything until Horizon Zero Dawn. Mm, good job. And they nailed it. <laughs> Grand slammed it. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Yeah. And I know that it is a little bit challenging for you to be able to make comments on the storyline because right. you haven't played the first game. But I'm yeah. here to tell you that that is like, like once you play the first game, hmm. I'm, I want to know from you no. if you feel somewhat apprehensive about, about going into the second game with regards to the story simply because of what I just described. And, and like, you know, you're going to be like, okay, so. Are we going to, am I going to be able to still be, be like, have these moments of surprise and blown away by the narrative or, and again, I have, I, I've barely started playing the game. So it's not like I know what happens in the storyline in Forbidden West, but mm. anyway. <sighs> yes. So we in hell at the same <laughs> time, jinx. <laughs> so, um. <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be a bit hard because I came over and they're like, oh, this is great. I'm like, okay, let's watch. And then you're like, talk to that person, talk to that person, talk to that person. You talk saw to that some person. action too. Yeah, you, you killed like three dinosaurs. Russ. Are they dinosaurs? <sighs> they're like um, beasts. They're, they're, they're mechanic beasts. Iron they're machines. giants. They're machines. No, not like giants, but um, yes. You killed three of them. And then you talk to like 20 people. It's an action adventure game. That's, what you, that's part of what you do. A lot of conversation. I'm, I'm just not that social. <laughs> <laughs> just like, all right, yeah, you're cool, fine. Just point me in the direction you want. Everyone you want me to shoot. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of job you want me to do for you? Okay, here we go. <laughs> okay. No, but I actually, I know that you yes. are currently talking out of your buttocks because I know this man right here loves himself a good story too. Uh, yeah. So, But no, I understand because... You weren't here when I first popped the game in. When I first popped the game in, there was actually a lot more of uh, the the running around wondering, oh, where are we? What's going on? And, and take on said. certain types of machines. You were like, hey, there's going to be like, a, like a, a sequence that basically catches you up in the game. Okay, so that, that's like the uh, very, uh, very beginning uh, where like you're not even participating mm. in the game. You're watching a video. Right. Yeah. I wanted to see that. No, you did not because that would have ruined <sighs> the first on. game. Okay. Are you listening to me? Yes, I am. I'm telling you, you're gonna, it's going to spoil it for you. Russ, let me ask you something. Uh, yes, Steve. I love it when you ask me questions. So when I couldn't play the game last night, uh -huh. um, I just started watching videos of the old game. Oh. And then I rewatched the trailer that was like the first trailer of the first of, game of uh of uh, the uh, the this game. Ah, uh, whatever game this is. <laughs> and <laughs> what are we talking about again? <laughs> What's forbidden? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going in your closet. Uh, <laughs> um 
<laughs> and so to me, it looked like the graphics from the trailer that was shown versus what we saw last night looked like it took a step back. Did it look like that to you? And or do you think they, they if you think they did that, was it because they thought at the time this is only going to be a PlayStation 5 game? And then now that this one's out, you might not know, but it's available for PS4 as well. Yeah, I know. I did hear about that. And to answer your question, I don't think that, that the graphics are scaled back at all. I think the problem is, is that you're you were watching me play the game on a 1080p TV. That could be so. And the game, like, I, to even to give you an idea too, the first game, the Horizon Zero Dawn title, um, had actually a, a noticeable difference in quality when played on like a 4K TV that had HDR. And this was back several years ago. So you should have come over, is what you're saying. Well, I mean, like, I, what I'm saying is, is that I think Man. it's time that I buy a 4K TV. I think that's what it is. Because I think that the issue is, is that, you know, look like what you just pointed out, watching a game like this, I mean, the game is gorgeous on a 1080p TV. And it's crazy though, when I think about how you can tell that, that be due to the television's graphical limitations, it's actually holding back the full like fidelity, the graphics fidelity of the game itself. Well, I could say that, well, it's definitely evident in this one because from what I've seen with, of the first game, which is not a lot, I'm being honest, uh, he saw the title <laughs> screen. <laughs> I said, push start. And I hit start. <laughs> um, it looked like Aloy had not changed that much, but like all the background graphics did on, from what I could tell last night, like they like took Aloy. Now this is again, not what they did, but I'm just saying what it looked like between the two sure. experiences. It looked like they took Aloy from the first game and just popped her in and they go, okay, here's a bunch of other stuff in the background. It's all like the, 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 bushes and the trees and the plants are like pow, like everywhere it can be puffed out and then here's water and here's rock and here's mist and here's dust and here's like you know whatever uh-huh so like the background looks like definitely different but aloy as far as the two that i remember seeing mm -hmm. looked pretty much the same uh no actually the characters have gone through a massive mm. upgrade as well um Aloy looks stunning with the the updated lighting rig that they have for her character. The um, the the skin textures are all more high res. I mean, the, the poly count is definitely higher. And and what I think is crazy is that we again I was I was watching it. We were watching it. We yes. on uh, <laughs> we yes. thank you uh, on a 1080p TV. Again, we that was without HDR. And without a 4K resolution, and it was still like like just a, a just a visually stunning game, and you know you can rotate the the camera around, which I always love. I love it when you can rotate the camera around your main character just to appreciate the front. Because I mean, like most of the time you're playing with a game like this, you're you're just constantly behind the character, and you're like, gosh, I'd like to be able to appreciate mm. the character from the front. And sometimes you can get like super close up to like Aloy's face, or you can look at some of like her gear or whatever. And it, I mean, it just, it looks incredible. Like the, the artists at Guerrilla Games really did uh, an amazing job with that. Not only that, but even the NPCs, I think at one point I even pointed out um, that the, the quality of their hands, because it's interesting, like, like when you go into some of the, the cinematic, not like pre-rendered cinematics necessarily, but it's kind of like the in-between in-game and pre-rendered. It's sure. like the whole, like they put some extra bells and whistles on there and they're telling the story. You know, you look at, you know, some of the hand gestures that they're doing. And I start, I started to, to all of a sudden pay attention to like the textures on the, on the inside of the character's hands, as well as even the back. Uh, and I was floored at how much detail, even in the fingernails there, there were. And that's, that's a huge testimony to, I think, like when you look at a, a proper next gen title, like mm. how much more they're able to do. Yeah, you saw the um, it's like all the crevices and like the creases. And yeah, all the like all the, the wrinkles, weathered like callousness of the callousness. Well, and did you notice too the skin? How like if they like bent like if you I don't know if the camera can pick this up, but like if you see my hand, like you'll notice like how there are kind of folds and wrinkles in the hand. Mm -hmm. They had some of that as the, the character were, was like articulating its hand. You know, you're just like, oh my goodness, there's a lot of forethought that's gone into this, which is really cool. So how, as opposed to like the demo that we saw that was like 13 minutes back in the day, uh -huh. um, back in the day, 
back like a few months ago. <laughs> oh, uh, it was about a year ago. <laughs> was about a year ago. It was supposed to come oh, out last year and then got delayed. Man. Well, hopefully but it's good. here now. Yeah. <laughs> um, so everything you saw in the demo, have you like gone through some of that stuff? Like, I mean, that's not really a spoiler because we've all seen it. Right. Um, so you've got to like the guy where he's like grabs your water bottle, he's sucking it back, and then you go out and fight this big not yet, thing. Not yet. I um so some of the, the the parts of the overall presentation I have seen, like like you know, uh, the, the fox that's um laying in the blight and it looks like it's dying and, and Aloy's like just kind of like, you know, petting it real uh uh sympathetically and that sort of thing. What um, about the water? I remember you were impressed with the water. You're like, oh man, you see the underwater seems like oh, awesome. So you have you gotten underwater? I have not gone underwater, however, yeah. what I have done is um that like and the, there are certain instances where like when you were over you got to see some of the water, yeah. um, but even like as I was playing the the day before, the the water has gotten actually a massive upgrade. There's actually there, there are two main areas like like back when I was playing Horizon Zero Dawn, <laughs> I had two like nitpicky issues graphically with the game. The first one was the water, and it was only because the environments themselves were actually like like just so well done. I mean, like it, it definitely like you have to understand horizon zero dawn came out, uh, even before God of war did. And you know, when God of war came out, God of war on, on the PS4, like, like, I mean the, the environments were also just tremendously awesome. Like you're just looking at it, but I mean, it, it, it goes to show you like, even when horizon zero dawn came out, which was, I think it was like at least a year, if not two years before God of war did its environments were, incredible as well. But the one thing that was a bit of a, like a, eh, was the water where like, it wasn't bad, but it was just like, well, eh, you know, if you look at it, it, it could be better. When you compare the water from horizon zero dawn to the water of horizon forbidden West, there is, you can tell like a lot of TLC has gone into it. It looks much more realistic. What I find to be most impressive about what Guerrilla Games has done with the sequel is actually the level of detail in the backgrounds. So typically, like in a game, like if, if you're farther away from something, there, there's something you can do in the game engine where, where it will on the fly reduce the poly count and texture sure. resolutions because it's farther away. Yeah. Therefore, you don't need as much detail. Less right? important, yeah. And, and, you know, to a certain extent, depending on how old the game is, sometimes gamers, you know, we can tell yeah. like, like if you're pulling away, you're like, okay, yeah, the, the LOD starting to get more simplified and that sort of thing. And then, you know, no harm, no foul, whatever. They have figured out some sort of methodology in this game where I am like, I am like super far away from things. And you saw this to a certain extent, like with those mountains, for example, mm. where you're like completely far away. And the, the, the background detail is not, I mean, it is not, uh, compromised at all. Like it's not simplified. It looks just as detailed. Even I would, I mean, arguably in some instances, it actually looks even more detailed than a lot of the elements in the foreground. Mm, and so like, like there, there was a particular po point where I was playing and, um, I was kind of like going through some of the, like, the, like these, uh, these ruins, and it had uh, kind of a, an outcropping that looked out over like kind of like this massive river uh, that had like waterfalls, and that sort of thing. But it was in the distance. You could totally see everything animating. And I just I was I was just so stunned. I, I was standing there looking out. And I was thinking, how on earth are they able to push that? Just just from a game engine standpoint, like you, you look at that and and I was just completely blown away by how they were able to pull that off. And I think it, 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 it kind of dovetails into the notion that every single section that I have seen so far, it's, it's literally as if the environment team or the world building team like decided they wanted to put all of like their TLC into this one section, only it's every single section. So it's like, <laughs> you know, it's a feast for the eyes when like you're playing the game and, and you're just, I mean, I find myself just stopping and admiring. You're just, you're looking around and you're just like, my goodness, like I feel so blissfully lost in this world. And that's what I want in an adventure yeah. game. You know, I don't want to feel like, oh, I know exactly where I'm going and there's familiarity everywhere. Like I felt as if I was on this brand new adventure, um, 
and I wanted to be whisked away and just, just lose hours to it. And then it's just, it's just absolutely fantastic. But I want to know your thoughts actually uh-huh. based off of some of what you saw re- regarding the background. Were you really impressed by that, what you that saw? Was, that was the best part of what I saw actually was, was the background. Like, I mean, like I was saying earlier, I mean, you know, between what I limitedly saw with the first game, it looked like, you know, Aloy was, you know, so, so and again, my observation, um, but the background was noticeably different. I mean, from the title screen, you're looking at like the waves coming in the water, like uh, uh-huh. water, they're learning a little something, something. Um, but even like, with just with the colors and like the, you know, if you walked by some trees or some vines and the mm. leaves were like really close to the screen or like where the camera would be on the screen, right. I guess, uh, following your character. Um, there wasn't any like pixelization or something. You saw like veins in the leaves sort of, you know, so detail like that. Yeah. It was pretty awesome. You know, the, the second issue that I had from her, I, I wonder, you know what I was looking for? What? Was, uh, I remember the ants carrying the leaves in the first <laughs> game. And that's what I was looking for on this one. Cause like, you know, I was only in the beginning of the, of the first game, uh, like the way beginning. Sure. And I remember them climbing up like the tree and whatever, you know, just carrying stuff. And I'm like, oh, they're, they're going to leave the ants. They got to bring the ants back somewhere in this, but I didn't see it. The second, um, little construct, constructive criticism that I had mm. with the first game was actually regarding the the storytelling moments. So like, you know, when you had the options to like, it's almost like the mass effect kind of thing, right? Where like when you were oh, playing yeah. the game and you got Dialogue a little log wheel. Exactly. Yeah. So in the, the first game, um, what they did was they had some kind of like algorithm, some sort of, some sort of um, code that basically pulled from a library of different types of, body movements. At least this is how I understand it. And it was designed to be more of an organic kind of um, like storytelling experience. So like, like anytime you went to, to speak with someone and you saw some kind of, um, you know, a little bit of subplot take place or whatever, and you're talking to somebody, um, they wanted to kind of give almost like a procedural type of quality to the movements. The problem though, was that, as humans, we pick up on how our body moves because so much of our communication is nonverbal. It's based, uh, uh, yeah, it's tremendously um, based on expressive. Um, just what our body is yeah. doing to reemphasize. Like, I mean, look sure. at me right now. I'm like, you know, doing things. <laughs> Talking like an Italian. Hey, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you know, when it came to the game, it was like the, sometimes like you'd see certain body movements that just didn't correlate with what was being said. And so it right. just kind of felt discombobulated as they were talking <laughs> and uh, something's not <laughs> working right. <laughs> and, uh, I'm happy to say that in, in terms of the sequel, it has been completely fixed. Like every single um, storytelling moment um, or like, you know, cinematic, whatever you want to call it that comes up, they move completely normal as if, like how I would expect. Like every time I'm seeing them talk, whatever is coming out of their mouth, it's like, yep, their body is doing precisely how, like what I would expect them to do. Except for the hair. Something I'm well versed, Russ. <laughs> the hair <laughs> does, I mean, it, uh, yeah, wipe your hair in there, Rose. Uh, yeah, Grease nice off and there. Yeah, oh, thanks yeah. for that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Right, I feel better now. Yeah, um, <laughs> I was thinking about getting a Kleenex, but now I got your hand. Um, so anyway, so you know, for the most part, her hair is like just you know draped down like anybody. You know, and she has like the dreadlocks and yeah, sure. And then like she'll turn to the left or turn to the right, and then all of a sudden like a hair will go whoosh, 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 and like just like whip around <laughs> like man, what did that come from? You know, or um, like there, there's no wind whatsoever. Like there's the branches of the trees are just like just still, and then all of a sudden she'll go like turn her head and the hair will whoosh uh-huh. like all the way like you've seen that sometimes like with Capcom and Resident Evil Two I think when the when the release Jill will go where's this and her hair will just go whipping around like it's <laughs> it's not mind that it's not, bad I, it's you're making it sound it's like not, it's like yeah. it's like visual monstrosity <laughs> it's not yeah. <laughs> It's not. <laughs> it's not terrible, but uh, but uh, you know, once you see it, you like you can't unsee it. I'm like I thought it was a bit distracting. That's all I'm saying. Russ. That's all I'm driving at. I will say this. I will say that that uh, the weight probably needs to be increased a little bit on her hair itself, just because they're using some sort of hair rig. It has um, collision 
detection on there. And right. I just, I think that, I think given the fact that her hair looks so heavy due mm. to the fact that she has some dreadlocks and she has like, like kind of large clumps of hair. I mean, it's, it's, it's obviously on purpose because it's not like they have like, you know, easy access to a shower that's like she shampoos <laughs> oh, her hair on. on the regular, you know, near the beach. But I, I do think you're right to a certain extent that like if they could go back in and maybe like do like a DLC right. uh, patch update or whatever, sure. that maybe they could like calm that down a little bit. But having said that, though, for the most part, like as she's running through the environment and she's, you know, traversing all these different places, it's fine. There's yeah, nothing wrong with it. It's sure, Russ. it's just more noticeable in more of like those those storytelling cinematic moments. Cause you're you know, to your point, like sometimes if there's like a a gingerly move a certain direction that she makes with her head, the hair kind of overreacts sometimes <laughs> a little bit. But that, that, that's a it's a, a minor right. minor thing. Yeah, sure. Minor thing. Going uh, more into the graphical areas though. I did want to talk more about the vegetation in this game because mm-hmm. there is so much of it. Like you look everywhere and the variety mm-hmm. of vegetation is crazy too. Like, like whether if you're looking at like vines or you're looking at moss, like the moss growing on the boulders, yeah, telling me, yeah. um, you're looking at some, some of the different types of weeds or exotic plants, the trees, it is incredible how much of a variety of flowers as well. Um, and not only that, but then the collision detection within those things as Aloy is traversing those is, I mean, it's so like visually satisfying to watch. Like, I mean, like, like I'll be going through what looks to be like, uh, I don't know, some form of like baby's breath or mm. whatever, like those little dinky plants and like, I'm just watching as I'm slowly like putting her feet through it. And it's like, you know, it's kind of crushing the foliage in a realistic way. Other times, like if I'm in kind of a marshy area, they have like some of those like uh, lily pads and, and uh, other little, like, I don't know, like, like just the, the ecosystem that you, that comes with like a marshy area. Excuse me. Um, Not gross. That was cute. Mm. Um, when you looked at that particular area, like you could see like the bugs that are skimming just above the, the, um, the water level. Oh. And like, if you, if you um, tilted the camera down a bit more, you could actually see underneath. And again, this is very shallow water. This is like, kind of, like I said, more of a swampy marshy area. You could even see like, like kind of like that dirtiness of like some of the algae and stuff that's in there. And like, I don't know, like, like, like every single like, like detail or, or like, I don't know, like, like the world building team, I think spent a ton of time going over real life, um, just botany, honestly. I mean, you look at it, it's like, it's, it's like the, it's, it's those instances where like, as you're playing like any given game, you like it registers on like on a subconscious level. You're like, yeah, that's exactly how it looks like. You're just like, wow. And so, but then you have to like, I don't know. You just have to stop once again and just appreciate. You do Russ. And like you said earlier, you want to get lost in a place like that. I mean, if you you live and work in a concrete jungle, what the last thing you want to do is I want to play a game while I'm around buildings all the time. You know, you want to get out. You want to see the world. Especially when you're as pale ivory like us. Yeah. Burn easily. Tomatoes. Well. Insta tomato. Well. Insta lobster. Or you can blind other people. It's very true. I don't need a, I don't need a flashlight, Russ. I just take my shirt off at night and know right where I'm going. You know you're white when white people look at you and they go, man, you are white. I know. Yeah. I have a story for you. Uh-oh. But I won't say it right now, Russ. Thank you. Although I am curious now. Patreon, Russ. <laughs> <laughs> Another aspect of sure, the Russ, graphics itself. Tell us about it. The machines. Oh, yeah. We haven't said anything about those yet. We really haven't. So the machines themselves, I haven't gone, um, or, or I should say stumble upon too many machines at this point, but I have stumbled across a few. Um, the one that you got to see, which I was actually really happy that you did get to see, was there, were, there was this type of like kind of like snake viper looking thing. Um, and that was a lot of fun because the game itself make sure that, that you as a gamer, whether you are a new 
newcomer to the to the franchise, or if you are returning and you're kind of rusty, it gives you like this nice lead up time as to remind you or refresh you or introduce you to the gameplay mechanics themselves. Sure, and so important. by the time that like we, I had gotten to that point, it was actually fun for you to get kind of an idea as to what happens when you kind of run across certain types of machines like that. And I was very thrilled to be able to like have some sort of battle like that. And it's so like, it's turned into like this tr- tradition of mine. And I'm sure many other fans of horizon do this where like once you've, you've taken down one of the mechanical beasts. You just, you just walk slowly around it at like, like kind of the dead carcass of the machine and, and just appreciate like the sheer amount of graphical detail within it. Like I did that in the first game too, where like I would take down like a thunder jaw, which is like basically like the equivalent of like a T-Rex, but it's, it's in horizon zero dawn. And I'm like, man, this thing is huge. And like, you just, I don't know, you get a sense of accomplishment being able to survive something like that, especially when you are first trying to battle it, because you will probably fail for the first few times. I thought you said you were going to teabag it or something. Walk around as Aloy, but like, <laughs> hey, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. I no. bested ya. I thwarted the no, Iron Beast. No. And be like, Xbox, record that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not on Xbox. <laughs> oh, that's right. PlayStation. PlayStation never. Uh, but they, they have, either way, Russ. They have a re- I, I know what you were going yeah, for. Yeah, that's, I know what you're going for. Yeah. You're a dirty man. <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny, though. <laughs> it is funny. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway. Anyway, so I'm very excited to be able to. to you know, be introduced to other types of mechanical beasts. Obviously within the, the gameplay trailer, they were showing quite a few of different types of um, yeah. machines that, that we will come across. So overall, what did you think of what? I mean, obviously you're very limited in terms of your sure, exposure. Yeah. To the Russ, uh, in the what, whole game, I'll rate it. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what, what did you think of the graphical fidelity of the machines themselves? Um, so again, so the machines themselves, right? that was another part where I thought having the 1080p TV took a lot away from the experience uh-huh. as far as the 4K. Because when, I, the, you know, when you're watching the the, the 13 minute trailer, gameplay yeah. trailer, you know, the machines are there, they're like shiny and they have texture. Oh, like yeah. I see all this detail, I'm like, well, oh, that could actually work. Look at those parts in there moving around. Yeah. And then Heroes, it was better than the first game but it didn't have that, you know, slap you in the face. Like, isn't this pretty cool sort of thing Yeah, uh, to me? I So, I mean, not like it was bad. It was just that there was left something to be desired. Indeed. So, yeah. Well, and that's fair because the, like, it totally makes sense. My TV is 1080p and we yeah, even wrestling. the trailers themselves were available in 4K. So you watch the game in 4K. You're like, whoa. So then you get accustomed to that. The music itself is also... Really, really cool. You know, the first game had a lot of like this haunting, excuse me, hauntingly Gross. beautiful mm. music. Yeah. However, if I if memory serves, a lot of the music from the first game was a bit more ethereal. Mm. At least it leaned more in that direction. Whereas this one, you still have a bit of that ethereal quality, at least um, as, as far as I've gotten in the game. But they have really started to bring in more of that kind of electronica, not techno, but just more Dump of that step. Yeah. Kind of that futuristic sci-fi mm. electronica kind of sound, which I mean, the way that they have arranged it, I think it works wonderfully. It's probably not dubstep though, Russ. Dubstep no. is like harsh electronic. No, a d- dubstep <laughs> is like a dance style of music. I mean, it's, it's, it's more of, it's a futuristic sci-fi <laughs> electronica type of thing, but it's, <laughs> Like, oh man, I can really throw out some arrows with this stuff. <laughs> start fighting. You're like, I don't know whether to start fighting or dance. It's a dance off of the machines. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. No, no. Anyway, kudos to whoever the composer um, is of right. this because so far I'm absolutely loving it. I think I think it's a, a perfect companion piece to uh, what I've been doing so far. And the gameplay mechanics as well, they are completely familiar. I really haven't come across anything new um, in terms of, of what they're introducing. However, I'm anticipating there probably will be some brand new types of weapons 
uh, added to the overall roster. And that's fine. As far as I'm concerned, like I like having the tried and true weapons make a comeback. And then on top of that, you just build on top of the, the weapons cache. And mm. so uh, I'm excited about that. And like we saw in the gameplay trailer, she has some kind of like ability to like have like a parachute or something that mm. glides her down. She didn't have that in the first game. So mm. that, that's like an, an example. Can she customize her little robot goat horse thing that she rides around? So, okay. So the cool thing about that is, uh, I'm, and this is, this is not really too much of a big spoiler. I just want to make the thing into a dragon and breathe fire. <laughs> okay. So, so freaking awesome. Stop. I'm going to explain <laughs> this. So the world itself is brimming with all kinds of different types of machines. Sure. The really, really cool thing about Aloy is, um, she learns how to hack into the machines. Uh-huh. So once you do that, there are actually a number of machines that you can ride. And it's not just for like cinematic pur- purposes. Mm. You can, you can at any point in time, if you want to ride one of those beasts, yeah. a lot, as long as there are certain kinds, because other ones are more like built for military purposes. Sure. But Yes, like like you you sneak up on one and you hack into it and suddenly you can ride it and that that's what one of the many things about Horizon Zero Dawn that is uh, really amazing. So, but yeah, I mean, even when it comes to this game itself, I'm not exactly sure if they have made some additions to the beasts in that mm. regard. Like like if you keep the same machine th- for like a significant portion of the game, are you able to upgrade? That particular, particularly hacked machine, I have no idea. I, I would guess not. But if they did, that'd be cool. I think so. Anyway, awesome. um, did you have any other thoughts about the game, Steve? Russ, I've spilled the beans. You've spilled the beans. Every bean I have in my bag. Are they jelly beans or lima beans? Coffee beans. Coffee beans. Well, don't let those go to waste. I think in conclusion for me... Um, I am so relieved that the game is finally here. I yeah. knew that the game was going to be absolutely gangbusters when it came out. Mm. I think Gorilla Games is uh, really hitting its stride. You can tell that this game is just like, it's almost like a sequel to a movie where like you know, the original movie was a, a major success and they decide that they're going to make the sequel like twice as epic, twice as good, twice the, the production value, that sort of thing. And this is very much on display with Horizon Forbidden West. So I'm really, really grateful to the folks at Gorilla Games for putting together and giving the TLC that this game deserves. And uh, my my, uh, if I was wearing a hat, my hat would go off to the, the the good folks over in that dev team for doing so. And I really am. I'm looking forward to being able to take my time and drink in all of the visual splendor that this mm. game has to offer. And again, like I just, I'm really, really excited to also find out like, where does the story go from here? Because there, there was kind of like a cliffhanger toward the end and they are definitely addressing it, which is really, really cool. So that will wrap up this episode of Joygasm. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. If you enjoyed this episode, we invite you to check out patreon.com slash joygasm where you can enjoy exclusive perks and early access to the show. Not to mention, it financially helps us continuing doing Joygasm. Also, make sure you hack into that subscribe button and uh, maybe ambush that notification bell. That way you will not miss a single episode of Joygasm, which drops once a week, every week. And while you're at it, do a search on your favorite social media platform of choice for at joygasm tv we're on just about all of them last but not least do a search for joygasm tv on twitch to see us stream our gaming adventures live every wednesday night at 9 30 p.m central time in fact actually there is probably a high probability that we will be doing our streaming on youtube Mm. with horizon forbidden west so if Mm. you'd like to see this fella Go romping through the world of the Forbidden West. You are more than welcome to just do a search. Actually, it's it's on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash joygasm. It's great, Russ. Thanks, Steve. I'll watch you. Thank you. Because <laughs> that's all I do. That's a big prize in here. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, a, it's a good thing yeah. that I'm such a natural uh, exhibitionist. Ah, right. 
you being the the voyeur, your your, your voyeuristic tendencies yeah. complement my exhibitionist my popcorn eating. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Go that way. <laughs> we'll see you next week. Latest. <laughs>